Welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning. And today uh, we are with, again, Amy Valentine. So, Amy, can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Michael. Amy Valentine here. I run a national nonprofit called Future of School. We're focused on broadcasting the impact that technology and innovative practices has on students and teachers. We've been in this business for the last four years, giving grants and scholarships away. Prior to this role, I was a, a classroom brick and mortar teacher. I was an online teacher. I was an administrator, teacher trainer, and I held just about all the roles you can hold in education. I'm very passionate about working with students, teachers, and with, the, with our country as a whole. Very good. So as someone with a strong background, both in the brick and mortar and in the online environment, and as a school leader, you've got a bunch of your former colleagues now that are having a bit of an unusual end to this school year. And um, what advice would you give them in terms of either finishing out this year or starting the next school year just to make the transition a little easier? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And I have this these kind of three words that come to me over and over as I've been listening to educators and leaders and talking to thought leaders and decision makers. And right now where we're at is a place where um, leader administrators and leaders are in one of three phases, or they could be in one of three phases and they're all positive, right? The first one is inform. It's really important that, uh, that administrators are informing themselves, that they're informing their families, the realities of their learning environment. And, you know, no administrator who hasn't used technology in their school or hasn't used it widely should ever feel like they need to be an expert. It's a new environment. It takes time and it takes development. So informing and reminding yourself of that and giving yourself grace helps you as a leader work with everyone who you're working with to keep them going strong through the rest of the year. The other, the next I in my trifecta of eyes is imagine right? None of us would have um, picked this, these kind of circumstances to be under to reimagine what school looks like. But now we're at a place where we can really imagine and reimagine what school looks like down the road. And so I encourage school leaders to do some looking into what online and blended programs in schools have been out there that have been doing it really well. And then you can take glean different strategies and pieces from them like our state-run providers, there are state-run schools across the country that have provi been providing blended and online classes to students since the mid-1990s. It's new to our country as a whole, but it's been around, right? So there's a lot of refined strategies that are out there. And then, then administrators can are in this great position that they can customize what works for their district, for their school. And then the third one I'll say is inspire. I tend to be a positivist, Michael, as you know, and so I always go, the glasses, it's not half full, the glass is overflowing. We're in a place where we really, leaders really can inspire their families to be part of a process of reimagining what K-12 education looks like in their school. So it's almost like this, this you know, it's, a, it's hard to think of it as a gift. It's like a gift wrapped in ugly wrapping paper that when you open it, it's a, it's a slate that administrators are empowered to redesign what that looks like and so I would encourage them to talk to their teachers, to survey parents. It's okay if you survey parents to get the good, the bad, and some of the ugly, right? Some people, it's the, the rate of adoption is just too fast, but you're going to get nuggets and pieces and trends from families that will help you as an administrator to redesign with elements that meet and exceed the needs of kids. Okay. So this time when we had to close down because of this pandemic, we did it sort of quickly without much notice and folks were caught off guard. What can school leaders do to help prepare their, their teachers and their students for if a second wave happens or if we get some local flare ups and, and their district has to close down again? Yeah, that's a great question. And I know lots of people are talking about it and there's lots of folks starting to work on those plans. And I see two main buckets there. I think that there's the, the infrastructure, the tangible process piece. What kind of plans can you put into place between now and the fall that ensures continuous learning for all of your students? And actually that gives a little bit of a, gives us a runway to make sure that all of the kids have the tech 
technology they need and that the teachers have the, the expectations outlined for them for creating lesson plans and things like that. So there's, you know, it doesn't take much to create a plan for you, continuous learning, remote learning, whatever we want to call it, knowing that this whole sector of online teaching and learning, which is different, has been happening for a long time. And there's a lot of resources out there that administrators can go to to build what customized plan they have. So starting the year with a plan to be able to move school to home or to be able to social distance in schools, have those parameters set in case you need them is critically important. The second bucket to me has to do with culture, the culture that you're creating along the way. Um, It was Peter Drucker that said, culture eats strategy for breakfast operational efficiency for lunch and everything else for dinner. So culture is that is that is the, really the foundation of any plan. And so I would encourage administrators to continue to create a culture of collaboration, to create a culture of creativity and to foster that among their teachers and then they're going to have a plan that has not only the legs that they'll need to walk in the time of crisis, but they'll also have the buy-in, right? And so parents are going to be really looking at those plans and really looking to see what's going to be in place as we move forward in days of uncertainty with some semblance of, of an idea of what, are, what will we do. Very good. Very good. So well, thanks again for another edition of five minutes on K-12 online learning with, and today our with was Amy Valentine. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Thank you for having me.